Okay. Sorry, I'm so close, but uh, been a while since I posted anything on the Camaro project. This is where we're at right now. Did the firewall. I think I put the roof on there. May start raining. Uh, this is what just we have made for the 69 Nova. Uh, the front subframe connector that I mocked up were fine for this, of course. This was a little more of a challenge. I went under, got on the shackle bolt because we're, or the, not the shackle, well, yeah, the shackle bolt. We're going to have four link with differential set here with the, the stuff welded on it from Ride Tech. Uh, Ride Tech 4 link, Mosier Engineering 12 volt, narrow rear end. But anyway, this is the project. I just got it up on there. Had to do some adapting here because, of course, you're on the shackle bolt. Wants to do that. So I weld a piece in to hold it from going this way. But I had to have a piece where it's set now to go from this way. So I actually put a turnbuckle in here and I bolted it from there up to the frame. It's going to start raining, so it's going to get noisy. I'll show you what we got. Uh, it's all about the balance. I want it balanced so we can set it anywhere. I don't want to get too carried away. My arms here got some lever plate under there, some white grease. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a tight spot. There's some junk falling out, including sand. Sand blasting. A lot of sand. A lot of sand. Uh, you ask me what if I'm working on it and once it can fall over, I will have these little ears on here. I've got a motorcycle strap. Basically, of course, I just got this one up. The Nova, we put it where we want. Had the Nova a little better balanced. I might tweak this and see how this is my fourth setting. It's a little different, but it's not too bad. You know, there's a fine line, of course. A lot of sand. Uh, some places are easier than others. You know, we wanted to go over to upright, I think, easier, because that's where we're going to leave it setting at. Uh, right there, it starts getting a little stiff. You know, these are hollow. I can always stick something there for leverage if I need to. These are bottoming out. I wish I would have welded a little washer on there to hold them a little better in the center, but it kind of wants to go to the end that's got the most uh, weight, which is the back end. Uh, of course, it can't come apart because of that down there. This up here holding to the car. That's the idea for putting them together. I made these arms to work out for this. The front one's kind of in the middle. Uh, I'll show you what we got again. Uh, come to the point where it's Got to tip over the way right there it is. Sand continues to fall out of it. Uh, gonna get to there, it bounced out pretty good. I don't know if you can see the connectors up there. We'll turn it up sideways and I'll show you the connectors. Uh, as you can see, there's places this. Very easy. <laughs> Couple washers in there floating around. Got the shins. That spot is a tipping spot sideways. You know, and the rotisserie is just basically so we can get to these pieces better, easier. And to be able to get in there and work them over. I got issues here I got to deal with. Inside the wheel wells, inside the trunk. It's welded together, but it's not completed. Uh, the four links on the bottom. You gotta do some tweaking on this. 
Yeah. But you can understand, it's just, there's some stuff I need to work on. This, of course, you can see I'm done. It's just a lot easier to get into trunk. Another place is if you can just put that piece right there where you want to use it. Of course, we can secure it here and there. I can just lean in here, work on this, whether it be an upside down, leaning down onto it. You got some trunk work I need to do. Clean up work. This especially. It's, of course, it's homemade. I made it. Just uh, flip it around. I'll get it on that side and we'll, we'll walk around. Let's go up this side there. Oh, see, it wants to dip over there pretty good. So I got these lubricated quite a bit. There's it's a fine line to good rusty metal holding it or lubrication and flopping around. So we'll uh, do a quick walk around to try to, to uh, let you see exactly what I did. Be a little closer. You can see that. Uh, there's where we've got on the subframe connector, not subframe connector, the, the leaf spring shackles. This is my little turnbuckle. It's actually keeping it when it's level from that going up. I just didn't want to weld across here to hold it because I want to get in there. I got to work on this. This four link needs to be adjusted here with the body. We got some issues there. Uh, not a lot, just a few. We got some welding do here on the subframe connectors. You see upside down, it's not the greatest. I've got to fill all this, weld all this. Uh, you guys are going to laugh about my rivets, but I'll tell you what I did. I used uh, panel bonding on this and I riveted it with stainless steel rivets. They're basically just there. If I want to, I can pop them off and we can uh, correct that. But I wanted that. I wanted to use panel bonding here. It holds so good. There's so much surface area here. I didn't want to weld it. Uh, I could have. This way it's held in place. That's set up. It's like concrete. I use it on the roof. This stuff is exceptional. And it, now it's all waterproof, watertight, one piece. Of course, there's some things you just need to weld. There they are. The light's probably not the greatest because it's overhead lighting. But you can see what's going on. Subframe connectors, the top. A few things need to be tweaked. It's going to be a lot easier. I'd like to take this thing home. We're in southeast Missouri. Of course, we're in the middle of the coronavirus epidemic. Here's especially what I've got to work on. Uh, the panel from the, let me just flip it over here. I cut the corners out of the roof panel because it would not fit. I've got them all connected. I bonded this panel on. If you can see it here, this panel's bonded. There's no welds in that, it's all clamped. The front, I couldn't clamp, that's the problem. That's why I use the rivets. I wanted to use the bonding. But I, I uh, could have put screws in it. Then I would have had to weld them shut. And with the weld against the body, the panel bonding, I don't think that's so great. Got a lot of work to do inside the fender wells. It's going to be a lot easier in a position where you can work on it, clean the welds up, buff them down. Anyway, that's it. Oh, just real quick, in case no one's seen it, here's your Mosier 12 boat. I had to had it shortened, so I had to buy these brackets and weld them on because of the big Ford bearings. The uh, standard shackle or leaf spring brackets would not work. 12 bolt. Uh, here's my front end, mostly put together. Of course, I've got these these tires and wheels uh, won't work with the. These disc brakes, so I've got them completely unassembled, so they just go in there for a roller. Brand new uh, steering box. 
Ferguson, everything else for is a uh, ride tech. Except the brakes, they're Wildwood. Wildwood disc brakes. They're the ones that seem to fit this application the best. As you can see, they fill that up. You cannot put the brake rotor on that wheel. We're running, we're going to run 18s here in the back room. Okay, folks, there it is. So, appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. GoPro, turn off.